Disney Plus's hit new show, The Mandalorian, focuses on the story of Din Djarin, an orphan who was raised as a Mandalorian warrior. Set six years after the return of the Jedi, The Mandalorian is introducing many Star Wars fans to the Mandalorian culture and warrior code. We learn that their armor isn't just for protection, but like their weapons, it is part of their religion. Spoiler alert for those of you who haven't watched at least the first three episodes, I do reveal some light spoilers that won't give away the story, but might be some info you want left as a surprise, so keep watching at your own peril. We were first introduced to Mandalorian armor with the appearance of Boba Fett in The Empire Strikes Back. Well, actually, he first appeared as a double-crossing bounty hunter in the animated Star Wars Holiday Special of 1978, where he was actually quite a jerk to that animal that he was riding around on. But by the time he appeared on the big screen two years later, his armor was a lot more prevalent. Yes, these are original action figures that I got in the 70s and 80s. No, they're not for sale, nerds! We didn't really know much about the protection offered by his armor because most of us were in awe of his really cool visor, this flip-down antenna rangefinder thing, his really cool jetpack with a freaking RPG sticking out of the back. It had clear signs of battle, which meant that it provided some protection from weapons, but the specifics weren't really known at the time. It still became a character in its own right, just like we're seeing with Din Djarin's armor right now. It turns out that Boba Fett's armor was made of Durasteel, which is resistant to blasters and knives and shrapnel, but it wasn't made of the Beskar steel that many of us are first learning about in The Mandalorian. Beskar steel is known as one of the strongest materials in the galaxy and is very rare, so much so that the Empire minted it as a form of currency. It not only looks really cool when made into armor, but it provides a much higher level of protection than Durasteel, one that can stop a laser bolt from a sniper rifle, and even stop a slash from a lightsaber. It goes without saying that all Mandalorian armor looks super cool, but what if I told you that not only is U.S. Special Operations Command fielding armor just like this right now, but that there are two sets of Mandalorian-inspired cosplay armor that can actually stop bullets. In 2015, a group of companies that make gear for law enforcement and the military decided to see if they could make real body armor inspired by the Mandalorians. They turned to Ryan Flowers of Galactech, who was already producing Mandalorian-inspired airsoft armor. The team then outfitted the airsoft armor with real deal military gear, including thermal imaging, radio headset, and ballistic protection. They called this effort Project Galactech. The Project Galactech armor starts with a semi-rigid urethane shell that's mainly designed to stop airsoft pellets and hold up to wear on the field. Underneath, AR-500 armor custom fit a layer of level 3A soft armor. Two sets were made with different styling. This gray set that placed greater priority on protection of the face and head, and this coyote tan set with open cheek guards and radio headphones instead of ear guards. Though they differ on the outside, both have exactly the same ballistic protection. They look like this panel of level 3A soft armor underneath, though AR-500 armor custom fit the material to the Project Galactic armor. And here's a panel that I pulled out of its protective cover so I could show you that it's made up of many layers of ballistic aramid. Kevlar is a particular brand of ballistic aramid you might be familiar with, but this armor is made up of three different kinds of ballistic aramid to make it better capable of handling a wide variety of handgun bullets. Its level 3A National Institute of Justice rating means that the Project Galactic armor is capable of stopping most conventional handgun rounds up to 44 Magnum. Here's my friend Tyler showing how their 3A armor can take 31 rounds of 357 Magnum hollow points from a Kunin Arms 1911. One round did manage to pass through the armor, but that was only after stopping a few dozen rounds hitting in the same area. Note that the NIJ rating only requires armor to stop one round. So what you're seeing is impressive performance for soft armor. That's just one reason this was a great choice for the Project Galactic armor. Let's take a look at the front. It's one of the jackets, the lead's out, it's expanded fully. And here's the back of the hybrid panel. See, we have, <laughs> we have rounds falling out of the armor. It's seen better days. That is outstanding performance from a hybrid.
That's the armor that was used by Project Galactac, but just like Mandalorian armor, real body armor can be made with different materials based upon how much protection you need and how much you have to spend. They could have backed the Project Galactac armor with armor rated steel like makes up this plate. That would have made it capable of stopping rifle rounds up to 762 by 51 M80 ball. Think Rambo's belt fed machine gun. Note the coating on the plate. It's there because when a bullet hits the steel, it breaks apart and the fragments can be big enough and fast enough to injure or even kill you if they catch you under the chin or in the brachial artery. This material is called Paxcon and it catches the bullet fragments so you don't. Interestingly enough, this is rarely addressed by sci-fi armor. We're left assuming that whatever hits the armor is deflected harmlessly away from its wearer and not into <laughs> any of the unarmored people that might be in the same room. This is something that I struggle suspending my disbelief about, even though we're talking about fake sci-fi armor in the first place. I had a chance to test AR-500 armor's level three plus steel plate against 762 by 39 shot from a select fire Hungarian AMD 65, and it had no problem stopping multiple hits from that round. <laughs> I know I got him at least one time. Well. Maybe I hit him twice. That third round might have gone off past the target. Well, and uh, I know these things didn't go through, but I'm gonna check anyway, just cause. And uh, no, they didn't go through. That's no surprise. There's some really cool rifle rated armor that's not only lightweight, but it's even buoyant. In fact, it's natural finish underneath this cover is white, which you will soon see. It's called ultra high molecular weight polyethylene or UHMWPE for short. This is the material that the US Army is using to develop a whole new system of soldier protection they're calling Talos for tactical assault light operator suit. The US Army's Talos project has naturally been dubbed the Iron Man suit. It incorporates a powered exoskeleton with armor, communication, real-time health monitoring of the wearer, all integrated with a variety of weapons. The exoskeleton assists the wearer in walking and running so that soldiers can move farther and faster for the same amount of effort and fatigue. Special fabrics combine with a liquid heated and cooled layer to create a microclimate inside the suit. Temperature and humidity adjust to the soldier's skin temperature and metabolism, protecting the wearer from both hypo and hyperthermia. Heads up displays show the wear where all teammates and tactical assets are located, including ammo and other supply status critical to the mission. As cool as all of this would be, it turns out that Talos is well behind schedule, but there is one big result of the project being fielded in combat today. US Special Operations Command is skipping the powered exoskeleton and fielding what they're calling lightweight polyethylene armor for extremity protection. As the name implies, the armor is made from ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is capable of stopping rifle rounds while reducing overall weight. Here's what that looks like for body armor available on the market today. Just looking at a plate of UHMWPE armor, you can see it's built differently than either steel plate armor or ceramic plate armor like this. First of all, it doesn't have a Paxcon coating. This coating on the outside looks like Linex because it kind of is, is a spall mitigating, a fragment mitigating coating. When a bullet hits the steel, it busts apart in pieces and you don't want those pieces hitting you as a wearer. So this coating is there to catch those pieces. UHMWPE itself will catch those pieces. So it doesn't need a coating on the outside for anti-spall, anti-fragments. Instead, you've got a tough nylon on the front and back side, and then you have a very slick nylon on the side. The reason it's slick on the side isn't for looks or comfort. <laughs> it's going inside your plate carrier. It's because you can see how thick this plate is. It's the armor and padding. The padding is bonded to the back of the armor permanently all together. This makes it so fat that it's a little bit difficult shoving this into the pocket of a plate carrier. And this smooth outside makes that easier. That's why it's on the front edges and you don't see it on the bottom. It's not needed there. I'm testing this armor with a 20 inch Remington 308 wearing a Liberty Victory titanium can. Perfect shot. After checking out the armor, it did great. It's multi-hit rated, so I'm gonna put a few more into it and see what we end up with. <laughs> oh, 
All right, let's cut this open and see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. You can see how there's delamination. You can see there's a little cracking. That's how it's supposed to work. And inside, gosh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a close-up of that. The bullets are fully contained in each of the holes. You can see from the side, the many different layers of the UHMWPE that are laminated together with heat and pressure. And you can see the pockets in here where uh, the, the bullet actually kind of melted from the heat, the material. And what's interesting is we know that it contained it because there were no fragments that were even in the plate carrier itself. If there was any kind of fragmentation making it out the front side, the, we would have seen extra holes on the plate carrier and we would have seen pieces of it inside the plate carrier and that didn't happen. So uh, despite the fact that these rounds were fully fragmented inside of the armor, they were fully contained. And you can see that is a layer right there, how thin that is. That is a layer, 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 and it all delaminated. This is what it was supposed to do. The part of this is for me ripping it apart but you can see it's just all bonded together. And if this looks like soft armor, it is used in soft armor. In some soft armor, you can even use this to make steel, the equivalent of steel cable, UHMWPE cable, which is lighter and stronger than steel and won't corrode. This is used for a lot of different things. And boy, it sure is effective as body armor. That's pretty cool. I'm glad I was able to get that apart. UHMWPE is just too thick to use as a backing for the Project Galactic armor, but it could actually be pressed into the shape of the Project Galactic armor if you threw enough money at the dies required to do so. Plus, the material itself is quite expensive. A plate like this costs three to four times what a panel of 3A soft armor costs for the same amount. That might not be a problem if you have the budget of the U.S. Department of Defense, but for a fun side project, it gets unreasonable really fast. So it makes perfect sense why AR-500 Armor chose to line the Project Galactic Armor with Level 3A Soft Armor. The helmet was also made with off-the-shelf ballistic protection, though with a large dose of Mandalorian-inspired styling and features. The Mandalorian helmet is easily recognized by its T-shaped visor and face guard. The original artist seems to have modeled this after Corinthian helmets made popular by the Spartans, which share the same T-shaped eye slots and the broad pointed cheek pieces. For the Project Galactic armor, the face guard and dome from a Galactic airsoft helmet were bonded to a Team Wendy ballistic helmet. Like the body armor, the helmet is National Institute of Justice rated level 3A ballistic protection. It also offers impact protection from blunt weapons or falls. Attached via a flip-up mount, the Armasite Iris Iris Monocle provides thermal imaging with connectivity to other thermal optics. Armasite has since been purchased by FLIR, but in 2016, they were introducing a new weapon system called Iris that linked helmet-mounted optics to gun-mounted optics. For the Project Galactic Armor, Armasite chose to outfit the helmet with a thermal imaging monocle that worked on its own or could relay the image from any Armasite brand thermal gun sight. That allowed the wearer to keep their head behind cover while accurately aiming their weapon. You could even link the iris to your teammate's gun so you could see what their weapon sight sees through your monocle and they could see what yours sees through theirs. That's a feature I'm not even sure the Mandalorians have. The helmet is one area where the designs between a coyote and gray versions of the Project Galactic armor differ. The coyote helmet has comms from TEA headsets. The ear cups amplify sound 360 degrees around the wearer while providing protection for hearing whenever the decibels reach unsafe levels. The microphone can be configured for push to talk or voice activation and the whole comm system is submersible for waterborne operations, though I don't think that's something Mandalorians have a huge need for. The gray helmet forgoes comms for additional protection to the ears while adding plates to fill in the decorative holes in the cheek pieces. These plates don't offer any true ballistic protection, but they would certainly be useful on an airsoft field. Both helmets wear mini infrared illuminators and target designators. These aren't the kinds of designators you'd use to call in an airstrike, but they'll help you get the most out of your thermal optics while giving you the option to show your teammates where they need to be looking. 
Ballistic helmets like this one are actually made of the same material as level 3A soft armor. It's molded and then coated in a resin to retain its shape. The Team Wendy helmet used by Project Galactac is very similar to this helmet, which I had a chance to test with a full mag from an HK MP5. This is 30 rounds of 9mm machined copper hollow points, which is well beyond the NIJ standard for protection, so I was not expecting it to survive. That said, it was still a great test for showing how these helmets are constructed and what their strengths and weaknesses are. There we go. Whoop, oh, malfunction. I don't know if you can hear it. There are multiple rounds inside here rattling around. That's gonna take some work getting in there. Oh, I could feel more. You can see the multiple impacts. I got this good. You know, I miss them sometimes, but a lot of them just went running right underneath it. It pushed, even though I was hitting centrally, it folded up underneath like, like that and came out through the center of his face. I did, I did find a bunch of holes with aramid fiber on the other side of the rubber dummy's face. So that's, that, that definitely happened. But I was able to get five out of the helmet and uh, <laughs> that's still pretty impressive. The helmet is in better shape than I thought. The rubber dummy is not in good enough shape, <laughs> but uh, this helmet is not designed to take <laughs> that many rounds in one spot. Of course, being made of level 3A soft armor means that these helmets can be defeated by hard, sharp objects if hit with enough force, like that generated by a Scorpid reverse draw crossbow. The Scorpid ventilator extreme shot that 400 grain arrow at about 445 feet per second, generating over 175 foot-pounds of kinetic energy. I bet you weren't expecting to see that. Yes, Daryl could use his crossbow to take out a zombie wearing a ballistic helmet, but that's a different show altogether. There are helmets made of UHMWPE, but instead of going for increased protection, the material is mainly used to reduce weight. However, it does show that UHMWPE can be molded into complex shapes. Could you imagine a set of armor that looks like this that could stop rifle rounds? That would be pretty cool, but it probably wouldn't be fun to wear, and it certainly would cost a whole lot of money to make. That's why even US SOCOM is foregoing coverage for maneuverability in creating their lightweight polyethylene armor. There are no photos of the polyethylene armor being tested today, but it provides an increase in coverage from 19% of the wearer's body to 44%, while reducing the total weight of the armor by 25%. That's really incredible when you realize that it's adding protection to the wearer's shoulders, obliques, forearms, and groin. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it? If you want to learn more about the real world products that went into the Project Galactac Armor, be sure to see the links in the video description. Be sure to subscribe for more videos on the technical explanation of technology. I really appreciate you watching the Tech of Tech, and I hope to see you next time.